Shalom. Call Halim La Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rukwakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. <coughs> Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. The element of surprise. So there's a lot going on. And when we look at today's modern technology, it helps us to understand the Bible better when we hear the term suddenly in a moment with the new advanced missile techno technological systems being led and guided by lasers and satellite technology. We're talking about missile systems that are traveling at advanced Mach speeds that can hit a dime half, halfway across the world <coughs> with precision. So we're going to need divine protection. And the Most High is going to run interference in the affairs of man and the things that are going on on this earth. So without faith, then we've already lost. But with the faith and belief in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, then we have a standing chance. So I'm going to go ahead and go into this article. First of all, all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And much love, honor, and respect to the beloved and the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and go here first. This video that I saw, and I won't play the video, <coughs> but I will put it in the description box. So they're talking about this year something occurring that's going to be very, very devastating, very catastrophic. And there's a video that I did about three weeks ago <coughs> in the movie, The Book of Eli. It shows Denzel Washington in a room, and it shows a poster on the background on the wall where he's standing next to, and it shows that poster during a post-apocalyptic event in which all hell broke loose. So during this interview here in this video, they're talking about the year 2024 being a very dangerous year. And the beloved elder Apostle Tahar named this year the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And many of the brothers have done videos talking about this year being a year of imminent danger. <coughs> Now remember, the Bible says that the Lord is a man of war. And one of the keys to military strategy is maintaining the element of surprise. Babylon is going to be taken by surprise. Remember, the Lord is a man of war. Why you think he says, I have laid a snare for thee. Thou art taken and also destroyed. And I'm paraphrasing. So the Spirit jumped on me today to do a keyword search. And I'll go into it. So now that the truth is coming out, free speech is under attack or is being censored and or, and or limited. It says Google pledges nearly $30 million to fight online misinformation or fake news. <clears throat> and there was another article that Joe Biden has invested in a FBI task force, upwards of $27 million, 
to monitor so-called misinformation. <clears throat> so this thing is getting real. Over 5,000 programs have been purchased to monitor online information. But yet we're under a nation that promises free speech. So <laughs> one of the signs of destruction is mandating that digital see hip or might be. And we're very close to that. But they need something catastrophic to justify a mechanism to maintain good order and control over the citizens. So they need the chaos in order to bring order out of that man-made chaos. I'm going to put this video in the description box. I want to go here first. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 51. You may already have it. Jeremiah 51 verse 8. Babylon is, let's go to verse 7. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. So the entire earth has been flipped upside down. Feminism, women's liberation, toxic masculinity, allegedly. So there's no order being pushed forth. 2.2 billion Christians around the world. 2.2 billion Christians. And we see that the earth is on a downward spiral getting worse. <laughs> and then you have democracy being pushed by the daughter of Babylon. Where all these different anti Hamashiach doctrines are nested with Christianity, the religion of this beast system, followed by the other religions around the world, like Islam. If I'm not mistaken, that's next in line under Christianity. But it's been a while since I've looked it up. But the bottom line is they're pushing doctrines contrary to the scriptures. Let's go here to verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. So suddenly, remember the Lord is a man of war. So every commander knows that to maintain the element of surprise gives a strategic advantage. Let's go into this word suddenly. <clears throat> suddenly comes from the Hebrew patawam, 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 which means instant or in an instant. And this is why the Bible says, watch ye therefore and pray. Watch. And a part of that watch is sounding the alarm and doing the labors of a watchman, warning the Lord's flock of the dangers to come. See, that effect, that should be in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 25. Remember the story or the parable, the parable of the ten wise virgins. excuse me, of the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins, the ten virgins. <clears throat> so the five that were wise, they kept the oil of understanding burning bright in their lamp. Wisdom. So that's being close to the source, close to the fire source, which is meditating on these scriptures daily. But I want to get to the key point. <clears throat> Let's go to Matthew 25, verse 6. At midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. 
go ye out to meet him. So that cry being made at the transition into another kingdom. We got to visualize this thing. When a cry is being made, there's duress. There's anxiety. There's panic and fear. <clears throat> Let's look that word up. There was a cry <clears throat> in the Greek. One moment. Okay, here we go. There was a cry. See? Outcry. Tumult. Grief. So a time of major panic and fear is getting ready to come upon the Lord of Babylon, America. <coughs> And we're going to need the Most High to run interference, divine intervention. See? And at midnight, there was a cry made. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lights, their lamps. So the lamp represent this doctrine. And only the five wise virgins are going to enter into the kingdom of the Lord's elect. And I'm going to go here to another key point here. Let's go here. I want to focus on suddenly in an instant. See, let's go to Matthew 25 and 11. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. So when you look at the Israelites that are not taking this doctrine serious, they are squandering time. They're using the grace period or our cloak of malicious let's, let's go ahead and get this thing here they're using our liberty as a cloak of maliciousness this great period <clears throat> let's go ahead and get it First Peter 2, let's go to verse 15. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So well-doing is pushing the plow of this true doctrine. First Peter 2 and 15 for so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. And there's many Israelites that are using this grace period as a time to do evil, to garner fame to try to create followers after them, to become popular, and to pad their pockets. They're trying to just build up their net worth and wealth here. Yet we're reading about a sudden, sudden destruction that's going to come upon Babylon. <laughs> so the five wise virgins represents the Lord's elect. And the foolish virgins represent the rejects, those that are not going to be delivered on this side, the Israelites. See, Matthew 25 and 12. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. 
Watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. When we read Second Ezra 13 and verse 29 through 31, he is going to come at the astonishment of them that dwell upon the earth. So maintaining that element of surprise, these men are talking about the year of 2024 in the interview with Tucker Carson, this year being a very dangerous year. The men of the Lord talked about that before it went on the mainstream. <coughs> Let's go here. Proverbs 24. Let's go to verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Only a fool would follow groups that change the doctrine every year. The leadership of the great millstone have not changed the doctrine and have not jumped from different belief systems to different belief systems. That's unstable ground. Proverbs 24 and 22. For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? So we keep seeing this word suddenly in the scriptures for a reason. Let's go here. Just want to check something real quick. How many times does it show up? <coughs> it's a lock you. It's not showing me right here. Let's just go to a key scripture. Let's read Isaiah 47 and 11. Let's go to verse Isaiah 30 and 13. Therefore the iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Instant destruction. We read that earlier. So these are those that are settled in their comfort zone. That don't fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That don't know his terror. Let's go to Isaiah 47 and 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly which thou shalt not know. So these missiles are traveling at mock speed. And then you have the electromagnetic pulse weapons, or EMP. These can be utilized on the hypersonic platform where that electromagnetic pulse to shut down the grid can reach this country under an hour. We're talking minutes. Let's go from there. Psalm 64 and 7. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. So the arrows of the Lord are sharp and do not miss and are going to be shot from one side of the continent unto the other. These are intercontinental ballistic missiles that we're reading about. The major vehicles and tools that the Lord is going to use to do his will. Second Ezra 16, verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. 
So these are the ICBMs that we keep talking about. <coughs> Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. So pockets of fire, destruction, and chaos is going to be sporadic throughout various parts of the earth. But America is going to bear the brunt of these judgments coming. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. So this entire kingdom is going to be in ruin. They've made hundreds of post-apocalyptic movies. One of my favorites is a movie called The Road, R-O-A-D. So the elites have access to left-hand side wisdom. That gives them foresight on things to come because they're consulting with familiar spirits on the left-hand side. How you think the Magi knew about Shai presence being in the world? Magicians, magi, or sorcerers. Let's go to Psalm 73 and 18. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. So the pit that they have made for everybody else, they're going to go down into their own fiery pit. So the Lord is using the works of their own hands to destroy them. Why? Because he is bound by his word. Whosoever stilleth a man shall surely be put to death. And he that is a murderer shall surely be put to death. Psalm 73 and 19. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terror? <coughs> as in a moment. When we look that term up, Raga. A short space of time, Raga. An instant, suddenly. The scriptures are consistent talking about that. Let's go to Job 34, verse 20. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. So we read about the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. At midnight, they went to meet the bridegroom. Matthew 25 and 6. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So Yahweh Shai is going to mark the transition into the age of Jacob. And that birth of the nation of Jacob is going to come with great birth pains or tribulation. So this is going to be a pivotal point to move into the new kingdom. But many are going to die by destruction during that transition. But the elect of Israel is going to be saved. So this is salvation, being taken up into the chambers or the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. While the bridegroom tarried, they while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. There's many that are still asleep as to what's going on. They have no understanding as to what the prophecies say. What's going to be happening in the days leading up to this major catastrophic event? 
They're going to mandate the Mod B, the CHIP. They're going to lock everybody down in smart cities. They're going to mobilize martial law troops. They're going to restrict freedom of maneuver, freedom of travel. <laughs> and they're going to stand up internment facilities and monitor these people that are marked with these d devices, those are going to be the ones given limited maneuver to travel abroad once they accept the new tracking device, which is not new at all. Many of the people that come up missing every year are used as tests to see how to check the functionality of these devices. <clears throat> And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So we read that midnight in Job 34 and 20. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. And the daughter of Babylon is literally going to be put in the dark with a major grid attack and grid shutdown. But also morally, spiritually, it's dark. So the valley of the shadow of death that King David talked about. He was prophesying about the daughter of Babylon. Yea, though I walk, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy, and thy staff, they comfort me. So the instruction book is our guide, the will of pleasing the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9 and 12. Ecclesiastes 9 and 12. For man also knoweth not his time as the fish that are taken in the evil net and as the birds that are caught in the snare. So are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. So a snare has been laid for Babylon. And she's going to be taken suddenly. <coughs> Let's go ahead and do it this way. I'm going to close out here in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 50. Let's go to verse 23. <clears throat> How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? So the hammer on the whole earth is America. Because she rules over the kings of the earth. And she has final say-so in their militaries. Where they deploy. When they deploy. How they deploy. I have laid a snare for thee. And thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. Thou art found and also caught because thou hast striven against the Lord. So everything the Lord says not to do, America says it's okay. And this place is totally anti-Christ or anti-Hamashiach, which is the correct term to use the anointed one. 
So they are against the Lord's anointed. We can read about that in where? Psalms chapter 2. <coughs> Let us break their bands asunder. And they're speaking against the Lord's anointed, which starts with Yahushai. So they're going to be taken suddenly. Proverbs 6 and 15. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. So with the technology today, we're talking nuclear missiles that can be launched from submarine platforms, which cuts that 25 minute travel time in half. Russian submarines have been reported approaching in and around the U.S. coastline throughout the Atlantic Ocean. So they've been able to get away with it. They've been doing little short test trips to see how far they can push their line or limit of advance. So these are all tests. North Korea has been testing its nuclear strike capability. <clears throat> along with China. Let's go here. We'll close out. Let's go to Psalms 11. <clears throat> we go Psalms chapter 11. So we're going to need the Lord to be our safe place, our safe haven in the times to come. Proverbs, let's go to Psalms 11 and 1. A Psalm of David. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. So Yahweh Shai is our rock. And our Heavenly Father, that is our rock. For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. So this thing is being planned out to take the world by surprise and to consume or devour much flesh, much flesh of many people. <clears throat> With these nuclear missiles. The wicked. Psalms 11 and 2. For lo the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string. That they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed. What can the righteous do? So King David is seeing into the future. Through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is speaking through him. Remember, Yahweh Shai is going to come to the daughter of Babylon. Who will lead me into Edom? Let's go to Psalms 11 and 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try the children of men. So the eyes of the Lord is watching over this gross, wicked, abominable queendom. And he is very displeased in how it's going. And he's going to show that displeasure through his wrath and fury of fire. <clears throat> the Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. I thought the love, I thought the Lord loved the sinner but hate the sin. This is a go-to scripture right here. We've been taught nothing but how to be set up and taken. Psalms eleven and five. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. So that violent man is Esau, Edom, Rome, Edom. 
That's why he said, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Yet I loved Jacob and hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. So they're getting ready to be laid down, body slammed from rulership, from the high ground, from being a king of the hill. Upon the wicked, he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup, so that rain, snares, fire, and brimstone are the components and the elements that are resonant within these nuclear missiles. So these are the weapons made by the smith that blow up the coals in the fire. So the Most High is going to manipulate their minds by the angels to set this thing off. Don't forget that the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs, can also activate and deactivate these nuclear launch facilities. And it just drives the faculty, the military, the staff there crazy because they don't. there's nothing they can do about it. Upon the wicked, he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. So the chariots of fire that showed up during prophet Elijah and Elisha's time, they're going to generate a fiery tornado. They're going to do that. So this is going to be a total mixture of blood, fire, hot lava, and massive floods of destruction. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. Let's look up this word countenance. <clears throat> countenance of the Lord. Just curious. Yep. Panyam. Panyam. Which is getting into his image or face. Panyam. Countenance. <clears throat> yep. Front. Heaviness. Impudence. Anger. That's a good description. Anger. See, it's talking about his image, his presence. So the Lord is going to judge the wicked with righteous indignation. And that indignation is a righteous anger fueled by a righteous hatred because of iniquity, sin. So this video will be copied and pasted in the description box. So we're living in a year of imminent danger. And as the beloved Elder Apostle Tahar coined this year, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And there's an interesting discussion that Tucker Carson had with President Vladimir Putin. I recommend on your spare time you look into that video interview as well. So, Russia is tired of threats knocking at their back door using the Ukraine as a military staging base to attack Russia and potentially Moscow. We got missile systems that can strike Moscow in under 10 minutes. So you don't think that Russia or Gog Magog is going to do something to counterbalance that threat. And I stand corrected for saying Gog and Magog. So I was corrected on that. The correct term is Gog Magog. 
the people and their land. I'm just talking about the modern footprint or geographical region of Russia, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, Tajikistan, so forth and so on, that are aligned with Iran, which were the Persians, called the Persians up until about 1930-something. So this is a a semblance of the ancient Medo-Persian footprint that took down Babylon. So the pieces are being moved into place to fulfill Bible prophecy. So we're witnessing some semblance of that alliance coming back together. This is why the Lord says, I will stir up the Medes, which shall not regard gold nor silver. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, or Kwakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yashawala and the Bad Babao. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatam. Shalom.